Hello and welcome to RBCM at Home. My name is Kim Goff and I'm a learning program developer here at the Royal BC Museum. I'm coming you to, to you today from my home, which is located on the territories of the Lekwungen, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations in Victoria. As people are joining us from all over British Columbia, I encourage you to consider the traditional territory on whose land you are on today, wherever you are. And perhaps you can even pop that into the chat and let us know. Our museum at home started in March, when the last March, a year ago, <laughs> when the museum closed due to the pandemic. It was an opportunity to talk to staff about what they were working on from home. Now, even though the museum has reopened, we've continued the program as a way of staying connected with people at home or school around the province. And this program and previous ones have been recorded and you can find them on the Royal BC Museum's YouTube channel. So if you were to visit the museum uh, right now, you would find on the main floor, the pocket gallery. This is a small uh, space for rotating exhibits from museum staff, partners, and community. On right now is collaborating for conservation. In order to conserve areas of natural significance, we need to know what's there, like taking an inventory. And a partnership between the Royal BC Museum, the BC Parks Foundation, and universities is helping to document the life in BC's parks. To learn more about you can have, how you can have a role is Brian Starzmonski. Brian is an environmental studies professor at the University of Victoria. He is trained as an ecologist and conservation biologist, and he is one of those rare and gifted naturalists who can work across the spectrum from insects to birds. Hello, Brian. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, first of all, congratulations on the Pocket Gallery. It's really an engaging and fun space. The photographs in there are amazing. But I think um, the message about how people can take, take part and uh, help in this documentation is so important. And that's what you're gonna talk about today. Yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our BC Parks uh, iNaturalist project, which is uh, a collaborative project with BC Parks and organizations like the Royal BC Museum and universities like the University of Victoria, Simon Fraser University, and so on to document biodiversity in provincial protected areas all across the province. Amazing. And I believe you have a slideshow and some great images to, sh to share with us. So I'll let you jump right into that. Uh, and while Brian is sharing, if folks do have questions that come up, please use the chat in the Q&A and I'll keep my eye on that. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, can everyone see my screen and, and the slides without any trouble? It looks good. Great. Okay. Well, thanks. I'll, I'll launch right in, um, Kim. And uh, my name is Brian Sturzomsky. I'm the director of the School of Environmental Studies at the University of Victoria. And I'm one of the, uh, the people um, helping with running this project that we call the BC Parks iNaturalist Project. And in particular, my partners are John Reynolds, who's a professor in uh, the Department of Biological Sciences at Simon Fraser University. And then we have all kinds of partners with BC Parks, uh, with the RBCM, and a whole team of field assistants that work with us in the summer, especially Kate McCown, who I've highlighted here, who's our project manager this year for this project. Elena Diaz, Chesson, Jason Headley, Thomas Barbin, Celeste Kieran, Bridget Spencer, and Melaine Gertz, all of whom are students at, uh, at different uni universities uh, uh, across the province or recent graduates. And I'm going to take you on a little tour of some of what uh, iNaturalist is all about and some of what we're doing with it in BC Parks. Now, um, I've got a presentation all set to go here, but at any point, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat and Kim will help with that or interrupt me and say, I have, I have a question about uh, different things. I'm very happy to, to answer as we go along. So the BC Parks iNaturalist project uses this uh, tool that's free and anyone can use. It's called iNaturalist and you can find it at iNaturalist.ca. We put a couple of examples in the chat, and it's a tool that's really wonderful for collecting observations of biodiversity anywhere you are in the world. So biodiversity very broadly defined is just all of those species that we see in nature. So here's an example of a map of the globe that shows uh, about 58 million observations of over 300,000 species 
each of these uh, orange dots on the map is represents at least one observation in that location made by almost one and a half million people. So a million and a half users of this um, app and website that uh, um, that make observations of nature all around the world. And it's grown so rapidly. I've only really been a user of this tool that was developed actually as a graduate project at the University of California, Berkeley about 10 years ago. I've only been using it since about 2018, when you can see that uh, on, this, on this figure that shows the growth in observations through time, there were about 10 million observations and it's growing exponentially. So doubling, doubling time is, uh, is about 12 months and it's a really amazing tool that anyone can contribute to. It's really interesting because it's not just a place to, um, to have uh, biodiversity observations made by experts. Anyone can contribute to this. And one of the really key parts of it is that it has a wonderful photo recognition tool. So with this, uh, with this app, which you can have on your phone, I've got a little iPhone here, um, but you can have it on a Samsung or, or um, any other phone. You can take photos with your phone and the, the app, as you upload the photos, and I can show you how to do that later if you're interested. When you upload the photos, there's a very powerful artificial intelligence-based photo recognition tool that will scan your photos and suggest an identification to you. So this is really wonderful because not all of us, uh, well, in fact, nobody knows the identification of every single species that we encounter with nature. So you can actually learn a lot about what it is that you're seeing by using this tool. And then you can later upload your photo to iNaturalist and it becomes a data point for scientists and, and managers in BC parks, for example, to, to use to see where um, species are in nature. So we can gather all of these data, we can really improve our understanding of where species are in nature, we can find new locations for species, and we can get lots and lots of observations in a way that's, that's really key using the citizen science or community science method that we can monitor biodiversity in space and in time at much greater rate, so a much higher frequency and much greater geographic extent than we've ever been able to before. So in this way, it really um, works well with things like the experts at museums who are going out and surveying. This allows uh, anyone in British Columbia to contribute and complement those museum um, specimens. So it's a really great way to engage people and get them out in BC parks. And the, the observations run the gamut. You do not have to be a professional photographer to take photos to get uh, your photos onto iNaturalist. You can take them with your phone or you can take them with a camera. And here's uh, some examples just across the taxonomic spectrum of all kinds of different things that you can see in nature and then contribute in different ways from, for example, up here in the upper left, uh, uh, a rattlesnake. This is in Kalamalka Lake Provincial Park that somebody's already identified. This is on the Cousins Bay Road, if you know um, that part of Cal Lake Park. Uh, this is a, a rattlesnake using the road after dark, right? And, and you can see that by making observations that show that that's an important place for snakes uh, um, in the park, then we can make management decisions about um, how to, to help people travel through that place and, and not kill snakes. We can uh, find observations of really unusual things like this green sea turtle that a couple of sea kayakers near Machosan found um, a couple of months ago on a paddling trip. Uh, and what's really interesting, this is kind of like Facebook or Instagram where you can comment on observations. Some of the curators at the Royal BC Museum identified this as a really unusual observation and wondered if they could collect the uh, carcass to, um, to actually have it deposited at the museum. Sometimes the observations are just plain old fun. One of our team members, Thomas Barbin, has a real interest in spiders. And you can see he's got this wonderful picture from Flat Lake provincial park uh, in the interior of Habernatus Sansonia, this really wonderful jumping spider. Uh, here's John Reynolds, the other um, co-lead on this project, who rescued a hooded merganser that had gotten trapped uh, on, on a road. Uh, they can't take off from uh, a road. And so John was able to pop out of his car, um, grab the bird and, uh, and drive it uh, to the nearest water body and release it. So all of these are really interesting and engaging ways to contribute observations to iNaturalist. 
So here is uh, um, one of the really wonderful things about the iNaturalist platform is that you can make projects. So specific websites that collect all of the information or all of the observations from places that you're interested in or from people that you're interested in or from times that you're interested in. So this is the BC Parks uh, iNaturalist uh, project or website. And you can see the URL right here if you'd like to go and visit it. And what it does is it's composed of a couple of different types of projects. A so-called umbrella project for every single BC park, all 1,034 provincial protected areas. This includes conservancies and ecological reserves as well. And within that, that umbrella project, there are collection projects. So a project from each individual park. Um, we talked a little bit about South Okanagan grasslands protected area earlier, but other um, well-known parks like Manning Provincial Park and Strathcona Provincial Park have lots of observations. And you can see there's over 270,000 observations of, of uh, over 6,900 species here. This is a great uh, um, partnership that we've got with BC Parks where we've outlined uh, um, the boundaries of each individual park and then created projects for it. And BC Parks Foundation is another of our big partners here. It developed as a, a really fun project that had a defined and focused extent. We could say, all right, here is this iNaturalist tool that anyone can use to collect observations about nature, the way that you might use a well-known um, tool like eBird to record your bird observations. You can use iNaturalist to record any observation of a species in nature that you want. So by focusing in on BC Parks, we could say, all right, BC Parks, here are more observations because BC Parks, it turns out, has many fewer biodiversity or species data than it should. Um, there are some, there are often for some parks, some surveys from when the park was established and that may have happened decades ago, but often there just aren't very many observations or, or biodiversity data from the park. So this really helps us to understand better what is in these, um, these key, most beautiful places in BC. We thought it'd be an engaging place to start by pointing out that anyone can use this tool, anyone can contribute their observations to encourage more observations of nature in BC parks. And here's Marble Canyon that I mentioned earlier um, between um, Lillooet, which is right down here in Cache Creek, really wonderful place. We started this project about two years ago. This, uh, this time, two years ago, we were starting to organize the first field season where we had hired a team of four students uh, to work with us to go out and travel around. Their job was to travel around and hike into BC parks and just take pictures of nature. When we first started this, we made all of the, the projects. There are about 17,000 observations of 2,700 species. After that first summer, which was really successful, we traveled all over the province from north to south, east to west. We um, had contributed in, uh, about 113,000 observations of close to 5,000 species. And now, uh, as we're making plans to start up our field season again on April 15th this year, we can look back and see that, uh, that now we've got 272,000 observations of 6,900 species. Uh, and so we're, we're growing quickly with this. We're contributing, and that's all of us, right? It's not just our group that's going out and doing this as a you know, survey job in, in the summer. Anyone can contribute to this project. And so we've grown by a quarter of a million observations in just the first two summers of, um, in the first two years of really encouraging people to make these observations. And what's great about it is that you can see that there's a real community of people that's engaged. One of the nicest communities of people um, that you'll ever find online. Uh, you can see there are 4,700 or so people who have contributed observations. And, and there are an, another 4,500 people who go in and look at your observations have a look to see if the artificial intelligence photo recognition has made the right decision or not on what the species is. And so these experts from all around the world can say, well, no, that grasshopper is, is not a grasshopper. In fact, it's a, it's a cricket of a type called a great grig or something like that. So, so there's this secondary component where um, to get your observation to so-called research grade, you need to have two identifications. One might come from your photo recognition um, 
uh, suggestion and then the other from an expert. So this is this is great. We see all of these people contributing to a better understanding of nature in British Columbia. The other, there, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say a, a message there for me is that you can trust the information then that you're seeing because it's being verified twice, which is really awesome. Is you're not just getting someone's guess, really. Yeah, that's right. It's it's really great. So there's often quite a lot of discussion on some of these things like the example of the sea turtle that I showed earlier, there were all kinds of comments about, wow, what an amazing discovery. And somebody, um, somebody else said, oh, it's this species. And that's very unusual. We don't tend to think of there being sea turtles in British Columbia, but every once in a while, a few um, show up here. So there can be that discussion, but then also that, um, that expert help to, um, to help ID your species. Another really great thing that, uh, that iNaturalist provides when you make these projects is that you can get a, a really great field guide or a list of species for any provincial protected area, any park or ecological reserve that you might visit. So you can go and you can look in advance if you're planning to hike across Tweedsmere um, Park, you can go and look at the Tweedsmere Park project. Or if you're in the Okanagan and you wanna go to Haynes Lease Ecological Reserve, north of Vesuvius, you can have a look at what's been seen there to date and you can say, oh, I'm likely to see cacti like the brittle prickly pear or rare birds for BC like a lark sparrow. So it's this wonderful field guide that uh, is also developed from the observations of the people who visit these protected areas. So here's an example from Nikoon Agate Beach and Misty Meadows Provincial Park. If you're dreaming of visiting Haida Gwaii, and uh, we haven't been able to visit Haida Gwaii in the last 12 months. If you want to take a virtual field trip through that area, you can have a look and see what's, uh, what's seen at the north end of, of Graham Island in Haida Gwaii. And here again is the URL, so you can go and have a look at, uh, at any of these parks. Um, on this free site, I should also say that it's free. Anyone can download um, this and anyone can contribute to it. I mentioned that we hire a team of uh, student field assistants each summer who go out and do the majority of this uh, surveying. For me, it's an absolute dream job. Uh, you know, when I was a, a student, I would have loved to have done this to go to these most beautiful and exciting parts of British Columbia. And we've had uh, a really great luck um, with just some fantastic naturalists who uh, love to be out in nature, good photographers and uh, really keen observers. And they've contributed over 180,000 observations uh, to this project. That's pretty neat. Here's an example from Kate McCown, our current project manager, but one of the people who, who traveled around last year. You can see from the map here, each of these uh, um, orange dots represents a park that uh, she visited. Of course, it's a little bit restricted in, in where she went. As I mentioned, we couldn't go to Haida Gwaii last year. We avoided the coast and much of northern BC because of um, um, COVID restrictions and our discussions with uh, First Nations, especially across the province, who would prefer that there not be outside visitors. And that was fine. We focused in on um, some other places in parts of the Kootenays, for example, the Okanagan, and of course, the south coast, uh, and so on. And you can see that Kate, over the course of the summer, managed to, pit, to visit uh, 64 BC parks spending 75 days in the field. She walked almost 400 kilometers uh, while INATing for about 390 hours and made uh, 17,000 observations, which is really neat. What a great summer uh, to be able to spend your whole time in BC parks like that. Sometimes uh, BC parks will actually ask us to go out and do some surveys. So for example, we had a, a list of rare species uh, found in Couch and River Provincial Park and it hadn't been surveyed in over 20 years. So they sent us this list with endangered species from across, um, from, uh, across the, the park. And we went in and, and you know, went and, and found uh, these rare species and confirmed that they were still there and found some others as well. In other cases at John Dean Provincial Park where there was some planned work um, around a, um, a parking lot, they actually asked us to go in and and do some surveys to see what might be um, in, in the um, area around the parking lot or if they had to uh, change anything, what might be at risk. So it's a really interesting tool for that sort of thing. It's also um, great. There have been examples where people have discovered 
new species for Canada. Uh, there's some great examples here in British Columbia, uh, and in fact, in partnership with uh, the Royal BC Museum to uh, to to from the photo, the original photo of, um, for example, a fly found on uh, Galliano Island in in one of my student my master students cupboards in his kitchen, uh, was later documented as a brand new species for British Columbia. Uh, in work with uh, scientists at the Royal BC Museum. In other cases, we found new species for Canada in, um, in places like Ontario through iNaturalist observations and discussion with experts. But you can also find some of the more, what we might think of as mundane species or, or perhaps you know, dangerous species like invasive species. You can get a very good map of where these invasive species are across the province. And crucially, we can also document uh, when they first establish in a place. And that's when it's easiest to remove invasive species. So Kalamalka Lake Park keeps coming up here because it's a great example of a really wonderful place in BC. Uh, there's a, a very small population of garlic mustard that established in the park a couple of years ago. And we could show exactly where it was and that it had just recently arrived using iNaturalist, um, which, is, which is useful. And of course, you can do the same with uh, the various endangered, threatened, at-risk species across the province. And you can see that there are many, many observations of all kinds of different sorts of, um, of uh, endangered and threatened species uh, across the province. So by contributing your observations here, you can really help to better understand where these uh, invasive species are and how we might deal with them and where um, rare, threatened, and endangered species are and how we might uh, better manage them. So to date uh, in this, we've uh, visited close to seven or 700 or so of the 1,034 total BC provincial protected areas, they're all outlined here in, in orange, um, have been visited. And over 70 of them have more than 1,000 observations. Um, and we're, we're, you know, we're building a, a much better understanding of the biodiversity that's in these protected areas. An iNaturalist is growing rapidly. It really is this wonderful tool for community scientists uh, around the world um, and here in BC to contribute really important biodiversity information to better understand the province. And you can see that we've grown by over five times. That's all of us who are contributing to this. Over five times the number of observations from uh, about two years ago to today. And that's uh, that's a really remarkable contribution to um, better understanding of the environment in, in the province. So we have big plans for this upcoming field season. You might see us out in, in BC parks uh, uh, around the province. We start on April 15th and go through to the end of October. We have six people that we're hiring this year. We're spending a lot of time talking with experts at the museum and the conservation data center about where to go, what to target, and so on. We're going to spend a little bit more time this year focusing on undersampled and rare species. It's not that we won't uh, make a thousand observations of Salal, we will, but we also hope to um, have some other um, rare species. And we're going to extend out the project a little bit uh, greater, a little bit longer. It'd be really wonderful if you could, uh, if you want to be involved in the project, you can get in touch with me. You can also just start using iNaturalist and contribute your own observations. If you're in Kalamalka Park, or any other provincial protected area around the province. If you make an observation there, it will automatically be included in the project, uh, which is a really wonderful contribution to, to understanding nature in the province. So thanks. Um, I'm very happy to take any questions and, uh, and chat more about this. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. We'll get you to stop sharing your screen there so we can see you. There are some questions coming through here. I'm going to get I'm going to get the first question though. So um, if I have iNaturalist on my phone and I'm at a park, it's already pretty well documented. Like let's say EC Manning Park, and I see a gray squirrel. Uh, if, so I'm trying to pick something that would be very common. Is there use like is it useful to upload pictures of really common um, species? Is there still a value in that? Absolutely, there is. There, you, you shouldn't uh, consider at all ever uh, whether it's an important observation or not. Um, for one, actually, a gray squirrel would be unusual in Manning Park uh, because it's an invasive species, right, from eastern North America. 
And so actually it would be really interesting to know that it's there. But then one of the great things about iNaturalist is that it's photo based. And so we get a photo of that species and, and there's something called secondary data in, in that photo as well. You might have a picture of that squirrel eating a species that nobody has ever seen it eating before. And so that actually, you can't actually predict what might um, be important about your observation. So I include, I encourage everybody to take every single observation that they can um, and just have fun with it. And I'm, I'm assuming the app prompts you to enter all of the important information like the location and the date. Yeah, that's right. So when you upload it, if you upload it from your phone and you have location services turned on, it will automatically be geotagged. So it'll be specific to the location because your phone is tracking you all the time. Um, and it'll also have I the time. You just lost your audio there, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jenny, do you hear? Yes, I can hear. I just don't know if Kim, you can hear, but Brian, I can hear you well. Okay. Is it me? Great. You're okay? Okay. So in, in, with your phone, every photo that you take is geotagged and timestamped. So if you upload from your phone, it will specifically, iNaturalist will collect that data along with it and it will be tagged. If, if you instead have a big camera and you take a beautiful picture of a great gray owl or something, you can, uh, you can add in the location yourself. But if you're worried about somebody seeing um, the owl and owls are, are sensitive species, you can obscure the location and it will randomly place the location within a 35 square kilometer or so box so that somebody can't go right back to where you saw that, uh, that owl. Thank you. For some reason, my, um, my headset just stopped working and I lost you there. So glad to know, <laughs> you know everyone who needs to hear you can hear you. Uh, Kevin mentions in Zoom that iNaturalist could also provide some really useful biodiversity um, data at a local scale. So although the BC Parks project, we're talking about all of BC, um, Kevin gives the example um, in Saanich, there's efforts to collate biodiversity information for the Resilient Saanich Initiative. So yeah, there's implications for the problem but you can focus on small areas as well and increase information. Absolutely, and uh, that's a very important um, observation, Kevin, that uh, any of your observations then become uh, data that can show just how biodiverse Saanich is. And you can find uh, new locations of species, uh, even rare species, you'd be surprised how little we know about where species are in the province. Every single observation is really valuable. Great. Um, another question, can iNaturalist be used to assess the abundance of species aside from locating areas for more detailed, uh, detailed census? Yeah, so it, it would um, serve best when it can work with those more detailed census techniques. There are um, good um, ways of turning iNaturalist data into estimates of abundance, but because it doesn't um, usually have the ability for people, you can do this, but it's a little bit complicated. It doesn't normally have the ability for people to, um, to mention their effort, their search effort. So we have a little bit of trouble from individual observations or small number of observations assessing abundance, but we can do it with larger numbers of um, observations. And that's why it's so important to have so many people using it. Excellent. And uh, the last question we'll take here is from Lori. Lori's asking, what happens for regional parks such as Todd Inlet um, or Rithitz Bog here in the Victoria area? Can they still use and benefit from something like iNaturalist? Absolutely. So those are really great examples of local, um, local places that are biodiverse and that people can go and make observations. Now, when I say that there's a project that's created for um, BC Parks, we've actually gone in and made that project so that it collects all of the observations and we know that they're in BC Parks. If the project didn't exist, and I'm not sure that one does for Rithitz Bog, you can still go and make the observations. It will still be tagged to Rithitz Bog. Anyone can make um, an iNaturalist project. So after this is done, or if we had 10 more minutes, I could, I could make the project for Rithitz Bog so that anyone could see it, but those observations are still geotagged to that location and they're still really, really useful for understanding what's there. 
Yeah, excellent. I would, yeah, let's absolutely do that. But maybe we will we'll end our live screen and, and we'll make this a being here bonus for anybody who's joined us on Zoom. We'll do a little live demonstration for you there. Um, but we do want to, to start to wrap up and I do want to thank you so much for being here. Um, and just showing how we can all have a, a role to play in this important project for documenting biodiversity. If you joined us late or you missed something, um, this has been recorded. So you are able, um, you will be able to find it on the Roy, Royal BC Museum's YouTube channel. So please have a look there. The museum has reopened and we are ready to welcome you back. And you can find out more on our website about time tickets. We will be continuing our at home, at home kids and outside for the foreseeable future. And links for all of those programs are posted on our website. Site. Next week on March 23rd, I'll be joined by UVic student um, Elizabeth, who's working here at the Royal BC Museum studying some of our rare whale fossils. So join us to find out what she's been working on and what she's learned. I hope you'll, you will join us then. And until then, take care of yourselves and one another.